One degree outside pattern predictions looking out through the next two weeks. Now it starts to get more interesting, right? Because coming into March, look, historically, you can get some powerhouse storms in March. And I've been saying for the past several weeks in these pattern predictions videos, it just isn't favorable for a blockbuster storm. I'm not going to say that straight out this time. All right, let's get into it. You know, I try each time to describe what the height to 500 millibars is. Some of you still commented last time said, I still don't really get it. Look, bottom line, when you look at this, just think about the fact that it's average temperature through a large column of the atmosphere. So the cooler colors represent overall cooler air. The warmer colors represent overall warmer air. If I set things into motion, we play from today on in through this upcoming week, you can see a couple of things that really stand out right away. One, the polar vortex still hasn't gone away. We've been talking about this all winter, right from the beginning of winter that it's established. It's been like old fashioned winter across New England with this thing set in place. Now, one of the things we looked at going into this period last week in pattern predictions is this polar vortex is far enough east that the average trough position, the dip in the jet stream, which is kind of the dip in the cool air is right over us. And that is not favorable for big storms. And that's why you've got a fairly quiet pattern overall over the next several days. Now, in our insights video, we'll tell you about the fact that there are a couple disturbances and there'll be some precipitation out of it. And some of it will end up as snow in parts of northern New England, but it's nothing that's all that hard, right? But what's interesting is you are getting these incursions of Pacific energy coming into the western United States, and these are going to continue to make their way east across the country. So you know you're elevating the game a little bit with regard to Pacific energy and moisture that comes into play. We also know that with this time of the year, we are rapidly gaining our sun angle, our sun strength, and as a result, rapidly seeing growth of warmth down to the south. But notice what doesn't want to let go. Even going out through March 6th, you've got the polar vortex almost broken into two pieces. You've got one that goes to the east, the other to the west. Having it go west actually is something that opens the door a little bit to more active weather. Because if you can thrust that mean trough position, that dip in the jet stream to the west, it stops the flow of relatively dry air into us. It increases the chances that you could get a disturbance to dig out ahead of it and cause a larger storm. And you look, well, yeah, but by the time I get to March 10th, you're back under that trough axis again. Yes. But if you're going to have these fluctuations that are going to be going on, then that does open the door from time to time to get a stronger storm to develop. One of the ways you can see that is in the jet stream. The jet stream, our fast river of air high in the sky that steers storms along. After being fast and flat at a lot of different points this winter, Notice what starts to happen as we get into early March. We get significant deviations where you get these big kind of troughs and then these ridges. Now, we're still getting cut off at the pass here at first. But if I go out through, let's say, about March 7th, March 8th, March 9th into the 10th, right, that first chunk of March, what starts to happen? classic March. You start to see the jet stream go into a bit more disarray. You start to get more waves that show up in the pattern. You start to introduce then more incursions of warmth and moisture from the south and still keep the incursions of cold coming down from the north. So while this is not the type of pattern that I look at and say, oh man, it is just that is going to be a, a blockbuster storm pattern. I wouldn't rule it out in this kind of a pattern that you get a strong storm. Now it doesn't mean in New England that we end up on the cold side of that. Uh, it, you may end up on the warm side of that, right? It may be a humdinger of a snow and windstorm and a blizzard type thing when you get in the Great Lakes. You end up on the warm side. And, and look, if you look at the overall temperature pattern in the coming days, and I've uh, basically warmer colors are surface temperature now instead of average temperature through the atmosphere. Here's your colder air. Every time a storm comes along, it does grab the warmth. And it looks like when you get that westward shift in the trough axis, it at least encourages storms to be able to kind of run what we call an inside runner. So it comes away from the coastline farther inland that tends to bring us warmer air to southern New England. That's not always the case in northern New England. In fact, northern New England can do very well for snow, even in a setup like this. But what I'm saying is I think it all comes down to timing along the way and that you do have the potential here for some bigger storms because of the fact that the polar vortex and the cold doesn't want to let go, even as the warmth and the humidity starts to build from the south. That is a good setup to try and surprise you. And by that, I mean, I couldn't look now and tell you, bam, that's the one. But I can tell you that when I look at the next two weeks, I say, finally, if you're looking for a stronger storm in the atmosphere, the door opens to that. Where does it go? I don't know yet. Uh, pattern predictions for us then in terms of temperature, you can see definitely warming overall, right? Now, keep in mind, New England average high temperature 
this time of the year has climbed to the lower 40s. So we are above normal in the first week. And in the second week, actually, you come out pretty close to normal. You're colder than normal for the upcoming weekend. Overnight low temperatures, actually, for quite a while, we do a thaw. There's just no overnight lows that drop down below freezing. And then eventually we do again as that colder air makes a stand again. And when you look at the overall percent chance of precipitation, and I've mentioned before, this is going to be a little different from what you see in our app because we can't possibly tweak it for every city in town on every one of these days. But this is something that we do as a New England average, and we put it together uh, manually for you. But we are looking at over 100 different solutions in doing this. And you can see the spike in the chance of precipitation that comes in Thursday. That is going to be rain for southern New England. Elevation-dependent snow in the north. We'll cover it in the Insights video. You probably do get an enhanced chance of some showers again heading into the weekend. Looks like mostly raindrops, but again, northern New England may end up snowflakes. And then next week, there's a lot of days that are kind of spiked up on precipitation chances here. Again, not every one of those is going to verify as precipitation. You'll see them consolidating, kind of like what we've done later on this week. But the point here becomes you've got to return to a bit of an active pattern at the end of the next two weeks. It does show up in terms of precipitation total over the next 10 days. It's not that it's epic. It's not that you, you see the big yellows and reds indicating a couple or three inches of rain that comes down in the northeast. But you do get into some more as we get into that second week of the next two-week pattern. And not surprisingly, it's reflected in snow, particularly, though, in northern New England. Because remember what I said, northern New England can do very well in a pattern like this. Southern New England, the chances are better you grab warmth each time along the way. But all it takes is one this time of the year. That usually is how it shakes out in March. Either you get a big one, or you don't get much out of it in southern New England. So anyways, uh, stay on top of all of it. Our app, One Degree Outside, weather on the App Store and Google Play. I hope you enjoyed these insights. And one of my favorite videos to do for you all throughout the course of the week. See you again later on.